In this episode of Hammerhead, we will be making some Greek architecture starting out with the pillars. Using the cylinder tool, create a cylinder and change number of sides to 36. It's much easier to be able to see right off the bat how your creation scales, so I always put down a player info start entity to help gauge the initial sizes. Grabbing the top face of the pillar, resize its height to be about 6 to 8 times that of the player. Extrude the top face and bottom face to be able to create these ring edges that we can manipulate. Double clicking on one of the edges along the ring will select the entire ring, which will allow us to scale its size by pressing E and manipulating the horizontal plane. For this pillar, we will shrink the top part of the pillar while enlarging its bottom ring. Select every other face that runs the height of the pillar and then extrude it inwards by pressing E to scale and shrinking the horizontal plane. To create the upper pillar architecture, extrude the top face in your desired increments of units. This particular piece is two face extrusions and then shrinking the top face down to create this ring bulge. It's up to you to be creative in your design. For this example, there are two more face extrusions, making sure to hold down shift each time to create new rings to manipulate with the scale tool. The bottom of the pillar will also be constructed with these extruded sections of rings to be able to manipulate. The secret to creating complicated architecture is setting up your meshwork to be easy to modify as you please. With the 3D grid becoming more of a nuisance, let's disable it and select every inner face of the pillar that we extruded earlier. Pressing Shift 2 will take our selection of faces and switch into edge mode, allowing us to use the bevel tool. We will be using this tool quite a bit. We want to smooth out and soften the architecture we've made. Change the steps to 1, shape to 0.5, and width to 1 for now. Make sure to check smooth normals. Now select the outside faces of the pillar. And pressing Shift 2 to go into edge mode, we can now use the bevel tool to help quickly set up these smooth normals. The previous bevel settings are automatically applied, with no changes required. The rest of the work on smoothing out the pillar is now made much easier with all of the extruded rings that we created earlier. By continuing to move through and double clicking each edge of the ring, we can quickly use the bevel tool repeatedly to soften the rest of the edges. Take a second to modify the values of each to give different proportions. The final part of the pillar top will be added using the block tool. The 2D top view is very helpful in quickly making sure that the sizes line up. Although I could make this from extruding the top of the pillar cylinder, this method is faster at the cost of light map space. Speaking of which, to save on unnecessary faces, go ahead and delete these faces that the player won't see both at the top and bottom of the pillar. Without a top face, select the edges of this new block. We will not need the top edges, so deselect those using the control key. With one more use of the bevel tool, we have now completed the pillar structure itself. With both objects selected, right click and under selected objects, click create instance. In the 2D view, copy the instance over by holding shift with the object selected, and then repeat the action over and over by pressing shift G repeatedly. With one row of columns created, we can focus on creating the rest of the frame by continuing to duplicate the pillar instances to make up the front, back, and sides of this historic Greek structure. Using the 2D view grid as a guide, create a new block that will make up the floor foundation of our structure. Adjust its height to 8 units so that players can step up on it in game without getting stuck. With the bottom face selected, press E and hold shift to extrude along the horizontal plane. Since the extrusion is not uniform along all of the axes, you'll have to go back and modify the edges so that the width of the steps remain consistent. With each step at 8 units, repeat the previous steps again, extruding the bottom face and adjusting the edges of the new extrusion to make sure that the width remains consistent. To select all the edges of the bottom object, select the object, then press Shift 2, and begin to deselect these bottom edges and diagonal cuts so they don't get beveled unnecessarily. Do so along all four sides of our object to keep consistent. With the bevel tool, we're going to smooth out these steps quickly. Adjust the shape of the bevel to a value of 1 to finish the foundation. The ceiling and roof of our structure is going to be made just like the bottom foundation. With the block tool and using the 2D grid, create a perimeter that is supported by the pillars and adjust the width to your desire. The process of creating the architecture for this top portion is identical in philosophy to our pillars. We want our meshwork to have multiple manipulation points, especially with rings. Each face extrusion made here will set us up for detailing it later. To make the roof, let's go ahead and select these edges and press V to make a loop cut. We will extrude the loop cut face upwards. This will give us uh, additional edges to go ahead and grab onto. With these edges selected, pull them up to the desired height and angle. 
Now let's start to detail some of the architecture. With one of the edges selected, pressing G will select all the rings in the loop, and pressing Shift 3 will allow us to quickly select the perimeter faces. Using the scale tool E, hold down Shift and modify the horizontal plane to extend outwards. Of course with the scale tool, you may have to go back after to make sure your trim is uniform on all sides. Repeat the process for this ring, except extruding it inwards. The front and back of the building ceiling will need to have some face cuts. With both faces selected, use the clip tool Shift X to make cuts that will affect both of these faces at once to ensure that they are the same, pressing spacebar each time. We can now extrude inwards these faces to give some depth to both the front and back of the structure. The next part is going to be a bit advanced. We're going to make an individual roof tile, and these cuts using the clip tool Shift X made on the face of the roof will allow us to create a frame to build off of. With a small rectangle of the ceiling cut out, we can now manipulate this face to make a single roof tile. We're going to thicken this by pressing Alt N while in face mode to make this face its own separate mesh, then press F to invert the face, and G to thicken based on the grid size selected. Selecting these edges, we can use the bevel tool once again to give us the exact curves that we're looking for. Press Shift Q and select the roof slanted surface so the next part works. Select the face of the tile and using E to scale it down on the vertical axes, we can now move the bottom edge to realign it with the surface of the roof. Duplicate this mesh so that it lines up perfectly with the one behind it, pressing Shift G to repeat this process until the tiles reach the top of the roof. In object mode, select one tile and press Ctrl Alt O to select all objects similar to it. We're going to go ahead and right click, select objects and replace objects with instances. Press T to go into transform mode and holding shift, move them into place. Shift G repeats this process all the way down the roof. Once the roofing is complete, select all the tiles by pressing Ctrl Alt O again, and then press N to recenter its pivot point. Anytime you work with instances, double check the pivots when multiples are selected. Duplicate the selections, press R to rotate it 180 degrees, and fit the tiles on the opposite side. We're going to add details to the structure around this portion of the roof we extruded inwards earlier. With the block tool, create a mesh that fits. Press Ctrl H to isolate the mesh so we can have an easier time deleting the top and bottom faces. Press U to unhide everything. Duplicate and move this mesh, pressing Shift G all the way down to replicate. Ctrl Alt O will select all identical meshes, making it easier to replicate across. Continue to surround the structure with this detail on one side. Don't worry if they're misaligned at the ends, we'll fix that because our OCD is kicking in hard. With all the objects selected, pressing Ctrl H to isolate them, we can quickly just select the meshes facing the front of the building. Hold Ctrl and use the middle mouse to free lasso and unselect any object. With the specific detailed meshes selected, we can adjust them so they are uniform from both ends, satisfying any OCD we had for perfection. Go ahead and duplicate them across so that way they match up, and we have finished both the front, sides, and back of our building architecture. Control alt o selects all the meshes, right-click selected objects, replace objects with instances, giving us the ability to modify one and change all of them quickly. Press Control h to hide everything else, and select the edge of the mesh, and by pressing G, give us the ring, allowing us to bevel it quickly. We can cap off the roof quickly by selecting its faces and making a couple of quick clip cuts with Shift X. After extruding out the new faces, we can bevel the edges as we have done previously. The interior of the Greek structure will be a simple indention in both the roof and floor of the building. With the face of the floor selected, go into the clip tool with Shift X and using spacebar to make our cuts, we can quickly move around and cut the floor up into the desired shape that we need. Select the floor face and holding down shift, extrude it downwards 8 units so that it is something that the player can step up and down. The ceiling will be made the same way we made the floor, using the clipping tool and the space bar to make quick cuts along the perimeter. Once these cuts are finished, select the face and extrude it upwards to the desired unit height. The final step is to have the dev hotspot texture selected as your material and to apply it to all faces of the objects in the map. You can double click an object to select all of its faces and pressing Alt T, the hotspot will be applied to each individual face. Now zoom around and enjoy your beautiful Greek architecture creation.